Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video on the Will's Health YouTube channel and this one we're going to talk about the importance of thiamine uh, which is B1, uh, the nutrient B1 and how important it is for IBS, gut health and how it can mimic things like SIBO and essentially why I've chosen to start taking it and I have taken it in the past for my gut health, the things that I've seen. So it's more going to be about my experience. Um, I was kind of unsure whether I should make this video more scientific, more practical, or my experience. It's going to be a little bit of a combination of the both, actually. Uh, and usually my kind of, it's going to be my knowledge and my reasoning of why I've decided to take it and why I think it's a good decision. And maybe that might consider why you might take it. You might not even heard of how important thiamine is and you've never even considered it. So hopefully this video will kind of open up your mind to realize how important thiamine and B1 is. And maybe you'll start to consider taking a mega dose if you feel like you resonate it. Uh, resonate with this information like I did um, when I was struggling with IBS. So first, I just want to mention that the main, well, actually, let's do this bit first. So this is the kind of flow diagram that I'm going to talk about, which kind of shows how thiamine deficiency can affect us, what causes thiamine deficiency, why might not show up in tests, these things. And I think this flow diagram really captures um, the issues that we're struggling with in the modern day. So a lot of us are actually deficient in thiamine and B1. And if we look at how we live in the modern day and what actually depletes thiamine, high carb, refined sugar, um, refined, refined carbs, stress, caffeine, alcohol, gut problems, these are all things that we deal with. Um, and especially in Western diet is what we deal with on the modern day. A lot of us eating high carb, high sugar stuff. And um, for example, when we need to turn glucose into energy, thiamine is needed. So therefore, the more carbs we're eating, the more thiamine is needed. So it's going to deplete our stores of thiamine. Uh, of course, we have the issues of soil depletion as well. So it's really hard to get certain B vitamins in and just generally uh, have a healthy life when we have such depleted soils over the years. So modern day living depletes thiamine. Now, I don't know how much detail I want to go into this because we can really break down how stress and cortisol can affect thiamine. If you want to go into a little bit more detail and understand, I will leave some links to some more scientific people. There's a guy named e, um, EO Nutrition who talks about thiamine and, and different protocols that you could use. So if you want to do a little bit more deeper research, then feel free to uh, have a look at that. I'll leave that in the description. And usually with thiamine, they don't really show up in blood tests. They can come up as saying there's fine, but it can also depend on um, the cellular levels and the transporters of actual thiamine and it doesn't always give a clear picture so I would think a lot of us are deficient in thiamine even if it doesn't specifically come up in a routine blood test for example. So now I want to go back over to this flow and basically explain why I chose to take a mega dose of B1 to help with my gut health and IBS and all that fun stuff. So as I mentioned before the modern day that we are living um, depletes our thiamine okay and the issue is with that is, well, we need thiamine for a lot of functions, but the main thing is going to be for our vagus nerve. So when we're doing these modern day things, high carb, poor sleep, caffeine, alcohol, it's going to deplete um, the essential nutrient B1. Now, a thiamine deficiency is then going to impair our function of the vagus nerve. Now, if you don't know, the vagus nerve is so important for our digestive system. And essentially what the vagus nerve is, is what connects our mind to our gut. So we need proper sig we need proper signaling in order for us to have healthy digestion, healthy motility, healthy stomach acid release, healthy enzymes. All the stuff involved in digestion is what the vagus nerve can control. And if we have a weak vagus nerve, then we're going to have weak digestion. It essentially acts as a communication between the brain and the digestive system, uh, mainly really important for motility. So if you are struggling with motility, mega dosing B1 is probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, but essentially just for overall gut health, B1 is um, going to be amazing. I'm just going to explain a little bit of the scientific world. I'm not going to try and pretend that I know everything because I don't. Um, and if you want to research it a bit deeper, you can. But just on a baseline level, you need thiamine to produce acetylcholine. Now, acetylcholine is the main neurotransmitter involved in nerve signaling. So again, between the brain and our gut health. And it is involved with the functioning of the vagus nerve. So essentially... On a very basic level, we need thiamine to produce acetylcholine to have good vagus nerve health. And of course, vagus nerve is what controls our digestion. And as I mentioned before, when we have weak vagus nerve, we have weak digestion. So then we can start to understand, let me put this into present mode. On a basic level, 
where's my pen on a basic level if we have low what the hell oh there we go if we have low thi uh, thiamine or b1 that's going to inhibit our production of acetylcholine and then that's going to make us have a weak vagus nerve and this communication between our brain and our gut health is going to be compromised that's where a lot of the issues that we are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis are coming from in my opinion now there are some tests you can find out if you have a deficiency in b1 i believe it's quite difficult i didn't do that i just kind of resonated with this message and thought yes a lot of people um, are struggling with b1 in this modern day if you were if you decided you want to supplement with it and you weren't deficient, you just won't really notice, notice much difference. I don't think there's much harm in doing that, in my opinion. Again, I'm not a healthcare professional, um, so please do your own research and talk to uh, your doctor when you do this. But essentially, that's the basic level of it. We're impairing our ability to produce acetylcholine. Again, it goes a little bit deeper. Again, thymine can affect all this, especially your nervous system. So if you are struggling with your nervous system as well, you're struggling to get in a parasympathetic state, then thymine could also be something you look into. Of course, doing the meditation and the EFT tapping and the TRE, all these stuff are great for our nervous system, but potentially you actually need something to help you on a cellular level. Um, and for me personally, this has really helped. So thymine is evolved in a lot, but on a basic level, neurotransmitters involved in the communication between the brain and the gut and the vagus nerve. And we know the vagus nerve is important for digestion. So again, we're going to reduce the neural connection between the brain and digestive system, weakening gut motility, digestive enzyme secretion, then our microbiota, so our microbiome and our gut bacteria and our gut lining, so leaky gut as well, is going to be compromised. So we can start seeing how just a simple thymine deficiency is starting to affect our whole digestive system because it's affecting this communication. Uh, then we're going to get digestive dysfunction and it's going to mimic IBS, it's going to mimic SIBO. So uh, do you really have IBS? Do you really have SIBO or is it a thymine deficiency? That's the question that I think we should be asking. Um, and then again, this cycle of gut health conditions and thymine deficiency start to go in a circle, really. Because the more gut health issues you get, the harder it is to absorb nutrients. And then you're not going to absorb enough thymine. And then you're going to get more gut health issues. And it's just a whole load of just not funness. So on a basic level, that's what's happening with you. And also, if you were interested in some studies, there was a study done recently. Uh, actually, I'm not sure how recent this one is, but it shows the association between B1 intake and constipation. Again, thymine and motility, really important. And it showed the consumption of B1 in diet and the occurrence of chronic constipation and inverse correlation. So we need thymine, guys, for this communication between our gut and our brain. Hopefully that makes sense. I didn't know how deep I should go into it because it gets a lot more complicated than this in terms of how the body actually works. But hopefully that makes sense to you on a basic level that you need thymine in order for your vagus nerve to function. And a lot of us are deficient in thymine, even if it might not come up in blood tests. Once I started learning about this, that's when I started to take action. And I actually felt some benefits of taking a mega dose, what we call a mega dose of B1. Now, again, we're taking a mega dose. So please talk to your doctor. Please talk to a healthcare practitioner. I'm not someone who can... Um, diagnose you or someone that can give you this protocol but essentially i'm just going to tell you exactly what i did and maybe that will um influence what you do maybe who knows anyway uh there are four main types of b1 now there is the main ones is hydrochloride now hydrochloride's uh thymine is going to be what you find in your b complexes if you look at the back of b complex it's going to be hydrochloride b1 most likely the issue with this is the bioavailability is so poor. I think it's like 10% of it gets absorbed. Again, we can see here limited transport, doesn't really cross the blood brain barrier, not very affecting uh, addressing the issues that we've just talked about. So the two that I think are the best is benfotiamine and TTFD. In terms of gut health and crossing the blood brain barrier and the absolute best one, it's probably going to be TTFD. So when I first learned about this, I took benfotiamine I took, I think the therapeutic dose is around 300 milligrams. I took um, 100 milligrams, then 200 milligrams for a little bit. I felt like it was working pretty good. My motility was better. I felt more calm. My vagus nerve felt more active. Um, I'm now currently experimenting with TTFD as well. That's because I think benfotiamine was effective. I think let's go to the even better one. TTFD can have even better bioavailability. It can actually cross the blood brain barrier, which is more effective when we're talking about 
um, gut issues and the vagus nerve. Now, the tricky thing with doing a megadose B1 is you can actually get something called paradoxical reactions. So as I mentioned here, the minimum effective dose might be around 150 milligrams of benfotiamine, but a paradoxical reaction is essentially where you feel worse before you feel better. Now, depending on the severity of your paradoxical reaction will probably indicate how deficient you are. If you're really deficient, you're gonna get more intense paradoxical reactions. So for example, I went really slow. You have to go slow, even if that means you open up a capsule and you empty it and you just do a little bit and see how you tolerate it. Paradoxical reactions can include brain fog, fatigue, many different things can come from um, things that you wouldn't even realize were caused by thiamine deficiency can come. So essentially the main ones are fatigue, brain fog. So you want to see how you tolerate it. So for example, what I did is I opened up to capsule. I did 25 milligrams for like five days. Did I feel okay? I felt good. I then did 50 milligrams, continued to feel good. 75 milligrams, then 150 milligrams. There was one day or a couple of days where I started to get headaches, um, but it was so minor that it didn't really, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't know if it was benfotiamine or just general life. Sometimes you get headaches. And then I went up to 300 milligrams as well. And I was fine. And this is how you want to do it slowly build up if you feel fine good if you have any sort of bad reaction stop slow down maybe try again or um, just go really slow with it that's essentially what i did and that's essentially what i'm doing with ttfd as well again i'm going to go slow do 25 milligrams then 50 then 100 um, and then i'll do 100 for a few months to build up stores um, and hopefully that's all good and you don't get any paradoxical reactions when you do a megadose of B1, there's also some other nutrients that your body actually demands more of, and that's really important as well. I think an absolute baseline, if you're doing, if you're considering this, um, doing a megadose of B1, you want to make sure you're doing a B complex, preferably it will be a methylated B complex. Um, you'll be doing magnesium, uh, again, a bioavailable form of magnesium, so like a glycinate or a biglycinate, and also some potassium as well, which you can supplement with. But for me personally, I just have lots of dates and bananas, which I think are adequate for potassium. Um, so when you take B1, your body just demands these extra nutrients, especially B complex. Um, so you want to make sure you're getting these in as well, so you're not depleting these levels. And that can also help with any paradoxical reactions as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, I'm going to leave some videos down below of the person that I learned from and also the book that I read when it came to thiamine deficiency. Um, this stuff gets a little bit more complicated than I read in the video, but the main idea is just to show you how important thiamine is. Maybe from, for example, for me, I never heard of thiamine being so important, but essentially it was. And all, you could know that a deficiency in thiamine could be the reason you have SIBO because essentially Thiamine is going to help motility because of this connection between the gut and the um, the gut and the brain. And SIBO a lot of the time is one of the root causes of SIBO, I think, is motility issues. So we need to address your motility if you're having some SIBO issues, which could be um, doing a high dose of thiamine. So hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Again, this is the main kind of flow diagram that you need to be aware of when it comes to thiamine deficiency. Um, I think it's worth supplementing. If you, if for me, I didn't know I was deficient, but I think it was just worth giving it a go, doing a mega dose of B1 because the likelihood that you are deficient because of this modern day living is quite high. So I think supplementing would be beneficial. You might have to play around with a little bit to see, you know, where do I get paradoxical reactions? Maybe I'm taking too much. Where's a good level for me? Um, and that's part of the game. Part of the game is trial and error. See how you feel in terms of my story anyway a lot of it was just trial and error and i felt like b1 was um you know a pretty big part in 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 making sure that my gut health is top tier of course for me personally as a gut health coach i want to make sure that my gut health is top tier um and i think doing practices like this make sure that is the case um apart from that i think that's it really um again please be careful you might get paradox corrections you might react react negatively do some more research, talk to a healthcare professional, work with someone to do this. Um, and that is going to be the best way to do it. Um, if you want my support in this, you want me to hold your hand in the journey. Of course, I am a gut health coach. So I help people in many different realms, um, not just, of course, thiamine, but across gut lining, gut bacteria, anything involving um, the gut health. I help people 
that is exactly what I do through a holistic process and actually figuring out the root cause, not just by throwing antibiotics at you. So if you are interested in that, then I will leave. That'll be the top link in my bio where you can watch a short little video and you can learn a little bit about how I can help you and you can book a first intro call to see if you'll be a good fit for coaching. If not, then just take some of the advice from my YouTube channel, my TikToks, and just go from there and hopefully you get some benefit. And again, I'll leave some extra resources that you guys can look into when it comes to thiamine and B1 and how important it is for this vagus nerve and of course your digestion as a result. There's also some research that goes back to the 1940s, which shows the link between a thiamine deficiency and SIBO. Like this stuff goes deep. I think there needs to be more research, more talk about this. Exactly why I'm making the video. Hopefully it will spark you guys to look into thiamine and, and just build some more popularity and stuff around it. Even though there's a lot of people doing it already, I thought I'd just um, share, it, share it with you guys as well. So, I mean, 90 years ago, they're already looking at thiamine deficiency in SIBO and there's a correlation. So clearly there's something here and I think it's worth supplementing with. It's not too expensive either. Um, but yeah, any questions, let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for tuning in if you made it this far. And um, yeah. Yeah, see you in the next one. Bye.